Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I hope you all are doing well so far tonight. Coming on here, delivering a late night news update. Uh, I guess you could consider this your April 21st and April 22nd update since it is technically after midnight. But I wanted to come on here real quick and talk about a couple of articles that I read earlier this evening that I wasn't sure if I wanted to report on or not. But I'm just kind of feeling prompted to come on here and knock out a late night news update. So this is your world news update for both April 21st and April 22nd, uh, 2021. Don't be surprised if I end up coming on later uh, on the 22nd uh, here. You know, maybe when I wake up, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see how things transpire as I'm sleeping. But I wanted to come on here real quick and talk about a couple of articles that I found off of endtimeheadlines.org. So without any further ado, let's just get right into the update. First article, the United States halts plans of sending destroyers into the Black Sea after threats from Russia. Uh, Russia has been threatening the U.S. quite a bit over the past few days as tensions between Russia and Ukraine have certainly uh, continued to rise. Uh, there, there's no sign that things are de-escalating. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Uh, things are rapidly spinning out of control as far as I'm concerned. A whole lot of stuff going on alongside the border between Russia and Ukraine. Russia is now reported to have uh, over 175,000 troops stationed alongside the border with Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine's reportedly going into full mobilization mode, so we'll have to see how all that plays out. I've been reading all over Twitter on some of the various OSINT uh, accounts. There's a whole bunch going on, but this is a threat that was actually made from Russia to the United States, essentially saying, like, you know, stay out of our region for your own good. I actually covered that on a previous news update. And now the United States has actually decided to halt plans of sending I believe two destroyer warships into the Black Sea after continued threats from Russia. The Pentagon has just flinched after recent warnings from Russia over interfering with the ongoing escalations between Moscow and Ukraine and has now reportedly dropped plans to send destroyers to the Black Sea. The report states that after further incidents have occurred in Eastern Europe between Ukrainian soldiers and Russian-backed separatists, officials have now decided to not send destroyers uh, to essentially avoid needlessly escalating the situation further. According to Politico, the transit was scrapped due to a myriad of different reasons, including a desire to not provoke Russia during what is seen as a very delicate time. And the report goes on further to note that Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Kavsoglu, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly, but he's the Foreign Minister of Turkey, uh, stated in a recent interview with NTV TV that the United States had reportedly notified Turkey on Wednesday that the ships would not be heading into the Black Sea. Quote, we routinely operate and conduct operations in the Black Sea and throughout the European Command, which is the area of operations, according to Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby in a statement that he released to reporters last week. And as you know, I'm not going to forecast or speak about you know, hypotheticals or about future operations, according to Ukraine's uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but they have stated that Russia announced that it would be closing part of the Black Sea near the Kerch Strait for foreign warships until at least October. I was reading more specifically the first, maybe the early portions of the second week of October uh, is when the Kerch Strait could, you know, in fact, finally reopen up. And this is what is supposedly under the pretense of conducting military exercises. I'm pretty sure anybody with a functioning brain at this, at this point could see that there's no military exercises going on. I think it's clear as day that Russia is preparing for a full-fledged invasion and takeover on Ukraine. Again, not sure exactly how things are going to play out, but it's certainly looking like here in the next, I would say, two to three days is when we're going to see things really hit their peak, you know, hit their proverbial boiling point, so to speak. So that is what's going on right now. That's sort of the up-to-date information in regards to Russia and Ukraine, and more specifically, the U.S.'s reaction to continued threats coming out of Moscow uh, within Russia. Now we're going to go on to the second article, which is very brief. It more has to do with like breaking news of an incident that just happened a few hours ago. And it's still a developing situation. There's not a whole lot known 
as it pertains to this specific situation, but I'm going to read it anyway. This was, you know, as it was originally written here on endtimeheadlines.org as a developing breaking news article. Syria has launched missiles at Israel. Explosions have been heard, and Israel responds with airstrikes. Uh, air, you know, after residents from across Israel heard the sounds of sirens blaring and loud explosions that shook homes across the region, it had been confirmed that a missile was launched. Uh, singular, not plural, so that's my mistake. A missile was launched uh, from Syria at Israel. And the missile was an SA-5 surface-to-air missile that was fired towards Israel and exploded in the southern Negev region, according to initial reports. There have not been any injuries or deaths reported from this incident, but reports indicate that the IDF has responded with airstrikes striking several anti-aircraft batteries in Syria, including the one which reportedly fired the missile that exploded in southern Israel. So that's what's going on now. You're continuing to see tensions rise between Iran and Israel. And obviously, you're always going to have Syria thrown in the mix there. And now Syria, you know, took the initiative to attack Israel. And, you know, not shocking, Israel, uh, as they should have, responded to this uh, with airstrikes of their own being launched in Syria. I was reading all over Twitter that there were reports of explosions uh, not too far away from Damascus. So definitely worth keeping your eyes on there because things could spiral out of control at any minute. At any minute, uh, Damascus could end up getting bombed, which would be a fulfillment of Isaiah 17:1. Uh, things are getting very, very tense. Uh, they've been tense for a while, but they're getting even more tense. Uh, all I can say is this: Jesus is coming soon. All right. All this does is further prove what we've been saying for so long now. It's only a matter of time before we fly. Very, very simple. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming back soon to take those who believe in his gospel alone to be with him in heaven for seven years during the tribulation period. So here's what I will say. If you're watching this video right now as a non-believer, I'm about to give you the gospel. All right, now I'm going to pull up my digital online Bible program. Uh, it's called eSword. That is the program that I personally use. And that is what I'm going to pull up here to share the gospel with you guys. The gospel is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. And it reads as follows. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Here's the emphasized part. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. A very, very simple gospel. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, the second part of the Trinity. He died shedding his precious purifying blood for the remission of all mankind's sins, past, present, and future. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead. He received a traditional Jewish burial in a tomb, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day, conquering hell, death, and the grave for us, the remission of all of our past, present, and future sins, according to the scriptures. Why did he do it? For our justification and therefore our salvation. We are saved, sealed, and sanctified with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, which is referring to the rapture of the church, the nanosecond that we believe the gospel of Christ alone. All right, John 3.16, I think, is very clear. I'm actually going to read verses 17 and 18 as well. So this is John 3.16 to 18, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. It's very, very simple. Salvation is so simple, man. Childlike faith is truly all it takes. Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. And if you believe that alone is enough to save you, you are indwelled with Holy Spirit, whereby you're saved and sealed with it until the day of redemption. That's a fancy way of saying you can never lose your salvation for any reason, even if you decide to walk away. All right, God does not abort his children, 
and he does not put his children up for adoption. The nanosecond you believe the gospel of Christ alone and are saved and indwell with Holy Spirit, you are spiritually baptized into the body of Christ as sons and daughters of the Most High. God ain't going to give away or kill his children. Once a child of God, always a child of God. Once saved, always saved. Period. Point blank. End of story. If you disagree with that, you're believing in a different Christ. That's all I'm going to say on that. I'm going to read Ephesians 2, 8, 9 to close this out. And this is about as clear as you can possibly get in Scripture. It's hard to get much more clear than this. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace, by definition, is getting what we don't deserve, which God offers to us as the free gift of salvation. And we accept that free gift, we receive that free gift once and for all, past, present, and future, by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. His death, burial, and a resurrection for us almost 2,000 years ago. That alone is what saves us. It's not our water baptism. It's not our ability to speak in tongues or follow the law or keep the commandments. Those things have never saved, they do not save, and they never will save. We are saved entirely by our belief in Christ alone. It's not of our performance or behavior or or any of our works or good deeds, so that no man may boast. Jesus did all the work. You are saved and sealed the moment that you put your faith and trust in him alone. All right, do not rely on yourself to get to heaven, because if that's how you've always been and that's how you are, you're not saved. But if you trust in Christ alone, you are saved the nanosecond you do that, and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, meaning you can never lose it. All right. And of course, I always leave a caveat there because there's some people who have believed the correct gospel, but have stumbled off into false teaching. Those people are still saved because they believed the correct gospel alone at one point. They've just maybe been deceived or, you know, have have listened too much to what their itching ears want to hear. They're still saved, though. The only way you're not saved is if you've never believed the gospel of Christ alone, the death, burial and resurrection of Christ for remission of all of our past, present and future sins. All right, so that's where I stand on that. That is your news update. Uh, Again, this was kind of a combined update for April 21st, late night, and April 22nd, early morning, because it is technically, you know, about 36, 37 minutes after midnight. But I wanted to get on here, and I wanted to share those two breaking news articles, and uh, I just felt prompted to come on here and do a late night news update. I don't think I've ever released an update this late before, so I'm breaking a record here for me. But it was worth it. God laid it in my spirit to come on here, construct an update, and deliver the news. And uh, by God, I'm going to obey my Lord and Savior. So that is where I stand on everything. That's the world news. I will see you guys in the next video. Should the Lord tarry his coming. Otherwise, God bless.